All right, here's another portion. This is sex and status, right? Okay. Uh, but because in American life, sex is like business and advancement, a prime criterion of success and hints of personal worth, it is in sexual behavior that the damage to Negro adults shows up in especially poignant and tragic clarity. The inconsistency between the white society's view of the Negro as inferior and its sexual exploitation of Negroes has seemed to, to its victims a degrading hypocrisy. Negroes observe that ever since slavery, white men have regarded Negroes as inferior and condemned interracial marriage while considering illicit sexual relationship with Negro women appropriate to their own higher status. The white man in America has historically arranged to have both white and Negro women available to him. He has claimed sexual priority with both and in the process has sought to emasculate Negro men. Negro males could not hold their women, nor could they defend them. Something that black women retort consistently and still do, right? But not protected. And it's, uh, certain Negro women of status who have married white men report that their choice was related to the discovery that the Negro men they knew were inferior in status, the Vesters say it all the time, interest and sophistication, and hence unsuitable as partners. Many problems of race and sex seem to follow the, this principle of the self-fulfilling prophecy. The Negro women, woman of status may see the Negro male as undesirable as a sexual partner precisely because of his low status in the eyes of whites. Hmm. Unlike a white female who may reassure herself that the, the lower the status of the male, the more satisfying he is as a sexual partner. And the upper class Negro female tends to tie sexual desirability to status and excludes many Negro males as undesirable just because their status is inferior. They don't anymore, okay? A lot of upper class black women uh, see themselves as white women and indulge in lower class Negro males as concubine just for that reason. It is a real question whether this discovery is based on fact or whether these women are not accepting the white society's assumption of the low status of Negro men and therefore expecting them to be weak. And saying this is something, this is an aside, but this is uh, something you heard on the other hand. We see this with uh, uh, with, with uh, loose white women, especially when they're young. On the other hand, frustrated, thrill-seeking white males or females have been told all their lives that Negroes are primitive and uninhibited, may seek and find sexual fulfillment among these same Negroes who are cool, distant, or hostile. Hmm. Negroes tended to suppress their bitterness about such illicit relationships, accepting, accepting the white men's evaluation of himself and of them. And in a sense, forgiving the Negro, forgiving, <laughs> so can we don't hold black women accountable for dating white men. And they hold us accountable, okay? Negroes tend to suppress their bitterness about such illicit relationships, except, accepting the white men's evaluation of himself, okay? I'm back to the dog test, and of them. And in a sense, forgiving the Negro woman for submitting to the temptations of uh, protection and gain, okay? Not only for, we forgive them for accepting welfare and rejecting us, we also forgive them for what? For uh, going after white men to move up in class. So when a, uh, a black woman marries a white man, we forgive her, right? Because, okay, in our mind, she's doing better because she thinks she's doing better. We forgive her. Happens a lot. That's like, um, don't, look at Meghan, Meghan Markle, right? She married Prince Harry. And the women were going all in about uh, her holding up as a princess. Black men didn't say shit. Same thing with Whoopi Goldberg and, and other uh black women that have married white men, right? In our faces, uh, Serena Williams, black men didn't say shit. But as soon as black men do it, guess what happens? The opposite happens. Interesting, the pathology has penetrated, right? The pathology has penetrated. White men are accustomed to possessing nigger women without marriage. We found that out with them having babies for them, right? Uh, without marriage. That 1.2 million out of wedlock babies between white men and, and Latino men that we saw in that study. Hmm. 
and no marriages to increase. How can you have you can have 1.2 million babies for non-black men out of wedlock, and your interracial marriage rate is lower than black men? How's that happen? Anyhow, white men were custom possessing Negro women without marriage, but today, the fact that a number of white men are married to Negro women of status, <laughs> Serena Williams, Whoopi Goldberg, Meghan Markle, particularly those who are well known in the theatrical world, indicates Negro women are placing a higher value upon their own dignity than other uh, Negro women were permitted in the past, and so are white men who marry them. But though a Negro woman may gain status, this is what I'm going to show you in a minute about what Bell Hook said, she was saying the exact same thing. But, all, but though a Negro woman may gain status by marrying into a white community, Negro men, even in the North, remain vulnerable if they seek to cross racial lines to break this most fearsome taboos. Exactly what I was saying, right? Well, for women, for black women, it's okay because they've always had access to white men. And now they've moved up to gain status by marrying white men. But black men, even today, face a terrible price. Uh, black men face a terrible price by crossing those lines, even today. Even though we do it more, we still pay, the, uh, 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 pay, uh, pay that price. When they have d done so, they have paid a tremendous price. A lynching, murder, or a prison sentence in the South. Social condemnation in the North. Even my own women, right? But above all, the price of their own self-doubt and anxiety. Yeah, because you can never be safe when you're with another woman, right? With a woman of what we call uh, what a white woman even a uh, latina woman what what did uh, dr johnson say but they say that all over the world the be, because of the black man's reputation of being that sexual creature no other group wants us wants them messing with their women they don't the emerging more affirmative sexual pride among negro males may have as one of its consequences an increasing trend toward more open competition between white and negro males for both white and Negro females. Seeing that now with, with the collapse of uh, economic classes, especially among whites and white women and Latino women and all other groups are actually free to choose, okay? And you see this competition more fearsome, even, you know, that's how come you see a lot of these, this tension between Latinos and, and black is, is because of this, this competition. One of the further consequences would probably be to in an intensification of hostility of white males toward interracial couples and toward white female participants. He predicted that. Reflecting the desire on the part of the white white male to preserve his own competitive advantage. Okay, let's pause this. Now, I've done this one before, okay, about Bill Hooks, okay? But uh, putting that together with uh, what we just saw with Clark, it's quite interesting, right? And this is from uh, Ain't Our Woman. Bill Hooks, Ain't Our Woman. Given that power in capitalist patriarchal America in the hands of white men, the present obvious threat to white solidarity is intermarriage between white men and non-white women, in particular black women. As whites have been much more voyeuristically, phobically interested in sexual relationships relationships between white women and black men, the existence of a rigid social taboos prohibiting white male marriage to black females is often totally ignored. Yet such taboos may prove to have far greater impact on a society than taboos against black male white female mating. Explanations as to why marriages between white women and black men are more readily accepted than marriages between white men in black women can be found in patriarchal sexual politics since white women respect a powerless group not anymore when not allied with powerful white men their marriage to black men is no great threat to existing patriarchal rule not anymore in our black patriarchal society if a wealthy white woman marries a black man she legally adopts his status according accordingly a black woman who marries a white man adopts his status. What did Clark say? What did Clark just say? This is the way black women see it, right? Who marries a white man adopts his status. She takes his name, Meghan Markle, 
and their children are his heirs. Consequently, if a large majority of that small group of white men who dominate decision-making bodies in America's society were to marry black women, the foundation of the white rule would be threatened. A complex system of negative myths and stereotypes daily socializes white men to regard black women as unsuitable marriage partners. In American history, white men have never sought to marry black women in great numbers as black men have sought to marry white women. Scholars have argued that since white men have always had free, unlimited access to the bodies of black women, they have seen no need to legitimize these relationships. What did Clark just say? That is the frustration, especially of upper class uh, black women. So you see these divestors, these uh, swirlers, these um, all of these, this is where it comes from. And this is their angst, okay? White men have failed to be serious in their relationships with black women in, in comparison to the seriousness of relationships between black men and white women. That's the difference, folks. Clark saw this back in the 1950s and 60s, okay? Like I said, he's the one that uh, came up with the doll test, with the, with the doll studies. Okay, this, I think this is all I have for this one. Okay, black, this is something that's funny. Black men have a vested interest in maintaining existing barriers which discourage black, uh, female, white male marriages for it eliminates sexual competition. Just as sexist white folks use the idea that all black men were rapists to limit the sexual freedom of white women. Black people employ the same tactic to control black female sexual behavior. Clark, this was where her, her and Clark disagree. In fact, uh, it plays out the way Clark actually says it. Black men are silent because black men feel uh, guilty, psychologically guilty, as he says, that they don't say shit. Okay, so they don't they 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 actually actually give in and don't say shit because they and tacitly agree that she is free to actually take a white man will take her to a higher status. Okay, because they can't because of his own internal, uh, I wouldn't say self-loathing, but his, his, his own internal uh, disposition. For many years, black people have warned black females to beware the involvement with white men for fear that such relationships would lead to exploitation. No shit. A black woman had no shit, and they were correct. While there is no need to deny the historical fact that white men have sexually exploited black women, this knowledge is used by white and black public as a psychological weapon to limit and restrain the freedom of black females. The investors say the exact same thing. This shit's not new, folks. It's just not, this shit is not new. Cynthia G spots this crap off on the daily, okay? This is intersectional feminism. Intersectional fem feminism uh, in a nutshell, right? And a lot of black women spout this stuff, spout this ideology. Guess what? without even knowing where it came from, right? But Clark said that shit years ago. Everything that Clark is saying is said years ago is actually playing out on a larger level. This stuff is not new. This stuff is absolutely not new. And this, I think this book, Ain't I One, was written in the 90s, okay? Some 30 years later, the investors are actually saying the exact same thing that she's saying. And, it, and basically, the stuff that's playing out on social media with the Bronnie James, with uh, every time you see an interracial couple, look at Star Wars with with the what's it, with with the what's her name with with uh, uh, what's his name chasing Ray, chasing the white girl. They blew up. That's how come the white white people get so upset about what's her name playing uh, the Little Mermaid because the Little Mermaid is supposed to be sexually pure, right? Sexually pure, red hair, blue eyed or green eyed white girl, right? Turn into a black girl because they don't see black women as that. They're not sexually pure. They're actually sexual objects to be exploited. White women, if why do you think they want? Amy Schuler did it right. She she don't want a Derek, right? She wanted she wanted the real black man, which is the urban black man, which is the 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 sexual beast. Even black women talk when they talk about black men. What do they talk about? They don't talk about his virtue. And one or two things they talk about his money and what he can do for him or his sexuality. They have the same, they view black men the same way white women view them. They look at their own black men through a, a white man's lens. Dark ghetto, if, if you, you cannot understand the Monahan Report without reading Clark's book, I have discovered that. I slept on that. 
because he meant uh, Dark Ghetto a long time ago. Now, I've had the book for like three or four years until I decided to crack open the book and when you open it up, you say, oh my God, oh my God. Clark actually told the future. He actually told the future. That's how he got pissed off when they rejected the Monaghan Report. And by, by rejecting the Monaghan Report, they rejected his work. They knew his work. They knew Kenneth Clark's work. They knew that Kenneth Clark actually did the, the doll test, the doll studies. They knew where the tango pathology actually came from. They've been hiding this crap for the last 60 years. So they let all this kind of pathology metastasize throughout the whole system, even down to this. They keep repeating the same things over and over again because you never fix it. You wonder where this stuff comes from. Clark told you where it came from, and then, then uh, uh, the, the intersectional feminists like 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 this woman repeated it. Bell Hooks is telling the same thing, uh, repeating the same pathology that Clark talked about back in the 1960s, 1950s. Same pathology, the same psychological pathology that has permeated through the whole system. Can't get past this stuff. And I'm not saying no. We got brilliant scholars, man. And you can't tell me that they didn't know. They read this stuff. You can't tell me they didn't know. And basically, the, for the for the younger Gen X scholars, okay, they didn't pass on the knowledge. Dr. Johnson said that was never required re reading when he was uh, it, 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 all throughout school. Dr. Johnson was a trained feminist, a trained intersexual feminist that gave it up. Dr. Gigi was a trained intersexual feminist. So was Dr. S Dr. Uh, Dr. Tommy, Dr. Curry. They were steeped and trained in this stuff. And they started finding out the truth, that the queen has no clothes. Anyhow, that's enough of this one. So this is BGS out, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.